Hello and welcome to the fourth flipped lesson on quantitative analysis. In this lesson we're looking at the equipment that you're going to be using to do your titration with. In order to do a titration you firstly need an accurate measurement of 20 mils of the unknown solution. And to do this we need to use something called a pipette. So this bit of equipment that the hand is holding is called a pipette. It's called a volumetric pipette and it accurately measures something like 20 mils far better than something like a measuring cylinder. Now the 20 mils will be written on the side of the pipette and there will be a line where the 20 mils is up to and just like measuring cylinders Wherever that line is, you need to fill it up so that the meniscus is resting on that line. The bottom of that meniscus is where you're taking the measurement from. To suck the fluid up into one of these pipettes, you're going to use one of these bulbs. There are three parts to a bulb, and parts. this part here... Uh, have, and the other two where you've got little circles uh, contain a little hard bead and it acts like a valve so when you squeeze these areas that bead's going to then allow air in and this is how it works you start off by expelling air from the bulb so you squeeze at A with your fingers, you pinch your fingers together at A and you squish in the bulb and the air will come out of it and it will be like a sucked out balloon and then you are going to squeeze you're going to put the sorry, bulb onto the pipette so the pipette's going to stick on here and you must just stop well before you get to S or the side thing otherwise you're going to um, push that bead into the bulb so you only want it on so that it's firm but not too far on that it's going to hit that area S then you're going to squeeze the S and that's going to draw liquid into the pipette and you want to draw it up to that line so you want to draw it up and so that it's probably about two centimeters above that line so you want to overfill it to start with then you're going to then you're going to take it out of the solution that you're sucking up and expel it so you're going to lift the pipette out you're going to press the E button, the expelling one and take it down to the meniscus so you're going to press it until it comes down to that meniscus then you're going to move your pipette to the container that you're trying to fill which will be your conical flask you're going to take the bulb off the top so remove the bulb and allow the fluid to just run down the side of the, the flask at its own pace. Now the pipette is designed so that the tip will contain a little bit of fluid even when it's finished. However it's it's calibrated so that there it needs to be finally when all the liquids stopped falling out of it you need to touch the liquid to the top of the liquid in the flask and that will draw just a little bit more. So maybe when you finish it, it had this much liquid in the tip and after that touch now you end up with this much liquid in the tip and that's an accurately prepared amount if you miss this step that's going to prevent you from getting excellence in the titration this 20 mils has to be exactly 20 mils Now that we have our 20 mils in that flask, this 20 mils is called an aliquot. It's a, an exact amount that's put in the flask. 
square add indicator and for our experiment we're going to be using phenol phthalene which starts off colourless and at the end of the titration when you've exactly titrated the right amount to neutralise that base in the flask it will turn pink and the indicator that it's just about to turn pink is when you add a drop and it goes like that drawing, that diagram, that photo. <laughs> um, you see just that drop being pink. You want to swirl that around. You need to um, get your water bottle and um, swish around the edge of the container with water. Wash down any drops that may be on the side of the flask, and if it still stays ends up colourless, you can add one more drop, and that one drop probably will take it over to the purple side, and you've finished your titration. When you're reading the amount on your burette, this is a burette. This is how you accurately measure um, in a titration you want to again be reading from the bottom of the meniscus as this diagram shows here is a poster that will be on the wall of the classroom and you are titrating to remind you um, of all the important things that you need to do when you have, um, when you have set up your pipette. You'll have a retort stand like this holding the burette with a special clamp that's made specially for burettes. Uh, you will need to go and get both solutions. The one that's going to go into the burette put in the big beaker. So you've got B for big beaker and B for, your, for burette and use a smaller beaker to get the solution that you're going to be putting down into the, the flask. So the small beaker goes into that one and the big beaker goes into the burette. Okay, <clears throat> you're going to wash the burette and the pipette with their solutions. Okay, so the, this is the one that you're going to be measuring 20 mils of. So this pipette needs to be pre-rinsed with that solution. It doesn't want to have any water in it. It wants to have that solution in it because any water in it is going to dilute it. The burette needs to be washed with the solution that's going into it as well. So you just need to pour a little bit in and get the burette and roll it so put it on its side by a sink and just twist it in your hands around and around and around so that you're thoroughly coating all the walls of it and then drain it down the sink do that with the pipette and the burette then you're going to fill up your burette with your big beaker and always remember to remove the funnel when you finish doing that because later after you've started your titration there could be drips that fall out of your funnel and change your results so you need to remove that funnel you take your initial burette reading remembering to go to from the bottom of the meniscus you don't have to start at zero it just wastes time if you're always um, trying to take it up to zero each time just you know whatever it is to start with that's what you want to record for your initial reading in a table that looks like this putting your initial reading there then you want to get your flask and um, make sure that's a clean flask it can be rinsed with distilled water it doesn't matter if there are some drops of water in this conical flask because all your calculations are going to be from the 20 mils that you accurately add from that pipette 
that's going to be accurately rinsed with that solution in whatever concentration it is. So that's why you can rinse down this flask during the titration with water because all our calculations are done with that 20 mils. Then you add an indicator to that 20 mils as I said on the previous slide and then you're going to do your titration where you're adding drop by drop stuff from your burette and when that colour change happens and it's gone pink and it's stayed pink after you've rinsed it down with the um, water bottle so you've washed it down and the pink colour's stayed you want to take your final reading and your final reading you'll now record onto your table and that will allow you then to get your final reading and minus your initial reading and that will give your final teeter. Now these recordings theoretically can be taken to two decimal places. So it could be taken to uh, 18.50 or if it looks like it's halfway between one of the little lines you could be recording it as 18.55. It's pretty hard to read a 0.55 However, that is supposed to be the accuracy of a burette. Another tip that's not mentioned on this chart is that it's really good to use um, a sheet of white paper on the stand underneath that flask. So if you put some white paper underneath the flask, then that very faint pink colour is going to be a lot clearer to see. Also when you're reading from the burette it's good to put a piece of uh, white paper behind the part of the burette that you're trying to read and that will make the black lines on the burette a lot more obvious especially if you've got a dark wall behind you it's going to allow you to see the lines a lot more clearly. And the other thing that you need to remember is to wear goggles this whole time because there's going to be acids and bases flowing around in this uh, experiment and you don't want those in your eyes. Particularly when you're pouring into that funnel at the top of the burette that's usually at eye level and splashes can occur so you really do need to be wearing goggles. You're now ready to have a go at titrating.